Hey guys, my name is Shai. This is going to be a Starseed Timeless Transmission. No pick a card or anything today. I honestly just feel like somebody out there needs to hear a very specific and detailed message. So that's what I'm going to do. I don't expect very many people to see this, especially right away. I think there will be people syncing up with it really over the next few years as they go by. So I'm kind of curious what's going to come up here. But basically... You'll know this is for you. If you synced up with this and tuned into it and you could feel right away that this was for you, then this is for you. I'm even going to shuffle on camera, which I don't usually do just in the interests of, you know, better TV, but <laughs> bear with me. Uh, I'm going to be quiet for a few minutes while I deal these out. And uh, once they're all out on the table I will make sure everything fits on the screen and looks okay and then we'll get into it Okay, guys, here we go. Now I know why I was feeling really, like, kind of breathless, like, tightness in my chest before I started doing this. You guys have some pretty heavy shit going on. And there's, like, a dog freaking out outside. <sighs> there's definitely some kind of, like, dense, dense <laughs> energies, some sludgy shit that needs to get cleared. Because, I mean, just looking at this, first thing, the first things that pop up are... You got five of cups right in your center self position, sitting next to the ten of swords over over here. Five of crystals and the bottom of it all is the tower. Honestly, I'm glad to see this tower here because that tells me that the negative stuff here is about to be cleared away and transformed. I'm assuming you guys, uh, if any, whoever synced up with this video is... Feeling the, feeling the anxiety, feeling the sludge, feeling the pressure, feeling the, the internal pressures and the external pressures like squeezing you, <laughs> squeezing you. You're, you've got like these like tectonic forces squeezing you and you're feeling like you might explode at the top of your head and you're worrying about it. And it's uh, not, not great for you right now because you've got this foundation of this tower moment. So, okay. First, uh, before we go any further, bottom of your deck is Ace of Cups. So I take that to mean that this to me goes with this Tower card. You are going to be having an emotional new beginning. So this sludgy shit that you're feeling right now is not only does it have to go, but it's going to go. You're going to be able to renew and reset your like emotional way of being. Of be being? Did I just say being? <laughs> I don't know. Your emotional way of being, the way you deal with your emotions, and the emotions that you feel. You're not going to have to be existing in this Five of Cups, in this pressurized, crappy state forever. You're going to have your emotional paradigm shift. Okay, I would like to get through all of the 
like crappy cards first. Not that there's actually that many of them, but there's enough that it makes sense to me about why why I'm feeling this really breathlessness. A five of crystals over here in your limitations and karma position. Your lack of security, your financial insecurity, your physical stability in your home, in your environment. Just that is something that has to be dealt with. I almost feel like you have been choosing your environments in a way that like almost like a self-destructive way. There's something about almost like you're afraid to look to the horizon, afraid to really put yourself out there and take a risk and trust that you will come out okay and get what you deserve. That it's almost like there's a uh, trauma from your past is stopping you from reaching for the stars. And because of that, you've been keeping yourself in less than ideal positions because that is easier and feels safer. You know, like maybe instead of getting the place to live that you would really love and would really be nourishing for your soul. Maybe you think, oh, you won't be able to afford it. Or, oh, you don't want to take that job that would enable you to afford it because you don't want to have to commit to that much work and that much commitment. Just so you end up living in this, you know, crappy little apartment. Or you keep getting in relationships, relationships with people that you know aren't good for you just because it's easier. And this is all okay. It's part of, it's like stemming from your past, like you were... You got hurt in the past, right? Things bit you in the ass in, your, in the past, and this is how you've been coping with it. But it's time to break out of that. It, that that part of your karma, that part of your past, like patterns is coming up to be dealt with. And I like this five of crystals, you know, as far as anyone can like five of crystals, because all of these, <laughs> they're moons, really. Uh, all of this emotional baggage is being shown the door. It's like spy, literally spiraling out the, this portal. So you really are able to release this. Yeah, and next to this, five of crystals, is your energetic health is six of wands. And six of wands is such uh, a card of triumph, indicating to me that you will be able to move past this, like, scarcity, poverty. Yeah, it's it's actually flanked. It's next to the five of cups as well. All of this pain, all of this anxiety and sludge and scarcity and just bleh, right? Nobody likes to be sitting in five of crystals and five of cups, right? That's bleh. <laughs> You're going to be able to get past it. Six of Wands. Um, you have deep within you the ability to succeed. And you're going to be able to... You're going to be learning that. You're going to be learning that soon. Strengths is the Ten of Swords. Very interesting. I feel like... Okay, two... That's that's weird. I've never, <laughs> I've never really gotten a Ten of Swords in a position like that before. So... I'm going to go on the limb here and give you some kind of maybe a non-traditional interpretation, but this is just what I'm getting. Two things are happening here. One of your strengths is that you guys can really cut loose crap that is no longer good for you. I think, I feel like you've been going, through, you've been through like death and rebirth cycles many times before, like literally and figuratively, right? That you guys are star seeds, or at least you're wondering if you are, which means you are. <laughs> People who aren't star seeds don't wonder if they're star seeds. They've never even heard of star seeds, right? So you guys have been through many death and rebirth cycles, literally, but also figuratively in your various incarnations where, you know, when you realize that some relationship doesn't serve you, you cut it loose. When you realize that you need to move across the planet because you need to go do something there, you can leave your whole life behind and do it. Star seeds are typically good at that because we've been wandering around the cosmos, right? We know how to start over. You guys know how to start over and something, you know that something has to go. And once you cut that loose, then you'll get rid of these fives. The other thing going on here with your strengths being the Ten of Swords is even though the Ten of Swords is this like final death, ego death card, it is still the culmination of your intellect, of the, like everything represented by the swords, your logical, active, ego masculine left-brained actions. So if we stop imposing this interpretation of the Ten of Swords being ten swords stabbing somebody in the back and them dying, it is still an element here of you have reached in an intellectual maturity, right? With Ten of Wands, you think, okay, you have your harvest in. Even though it's a burden, burden you've harvested. Ten of Cups, right? Emotional sovereignty and just love and beauty ten of pentacles absolute abundance ten of swords is the pinnacle of 
your intellectual mind. Especially this one, guys. This this card, this Ten of Swords doesn't show somebody being stabbed in the back by Ten Swords. We have this sacred geometry with all of these swords around it. Feast your eyes on that for a minute. Yeah. All right, what else is going on here? Your spiritual journey is the Three of Cups. This is a card of soul family and of healing. I So again, that is simultaneous. You are going to be meeting soul family members, maybe not even physically, maybe just energetically. You're syncing up with them all across the planet. And that's going to be bringing healing. But at the same time, you can't meet, you can't sync up and resonate with your soul family until you do your healing. But of course, these things happened simultaneously. They are one thing. They only seem linear and hierarchical because of our human perspective but you guys know on a like the level of your consciousness that everything is happening everything has already happened everything has already happened right we just think it's happening so your soul family and your healing are going to be coming together which is so good to be seeing uh that three of cups is topping your your tower and your five of cups so Healing and family is coming. Coming, guys. Remember that as you go through this tower. Your shadow position is the Knight of Crystals. I really like the Knight of Crystals, especially this one. But in the shadow position, I would take that to mean maybe you've been kind of like slow. <laughs> not, not like slow mentally, but slow as in plodding along in your life. Maybe you've been kind of dragging your feet a little bit, not doing... Not sharing your message with the world, at least not as vibrantly and as quickly as you could. Um, like Because the, the Knight of Pentacles is, is the slow night, right? The slow night. So I think you've there's something about dragging your heels. You've been dragging your heels, and I think it's time to stop doing that. Time to stop dragging your heels. And yes, because your ambition is the Eight of Cups. You, I know, since this is your ambition, you know that you... You are asking the universe, like, when is it? To, when am I being activated? When do I get to level up? When do I get to ascend? When? When is the next thing? I am ready. I am ready for more. Otherwise, you wouldn't be getting the Eight of Cups in your ambitions. <laughs> so you guys are here, ready to you. You're ready to ascend. You're ready to evolve. You want more out of life than just you want. You don't want to be the the Knight of Pentacles anymore. You want more out of life than just the ho hum, you know, delivery boy kind of life. You are ready for your spiritual journey and it's coming <laughs> because oh my god i love it when page of wands when this particular page of wands comes with this tower because okay this page of wands is your highest potential and look she is getting ready she's the page of wands she is um ambitious and excited and fearlessly setting out on a new adventure and here she is standing right before this like shrine and going to go through this portal. And I really see this is, this is just, I don't know. This is how I always interpret this. This portal, particularly on the page of wands is the portal to the tower. It doesn't look exactly like it in the cards, but I really feel that that's what it represents. When she goes into this portal, she's going to be entering the tower. And that is actually with this deck. One of the reasons I basically only use this deck for star seed readings mostly is, uh, this tower is not a tower of collapse. This isn't the Tower of Babel. This isn't all the other towers where the tower collapses and people jump out of the windows and y'all follow the earth and your whole shit is, is messed up, right? No, this tower, you enter into it. It is a place of transformation. It's almost like you go in there to start your, your, your death cycle, right? If we had the death card and the death card in this deck is transformation. You go into this temple to, to, to transform. The Page of Wands goes into this temple to transform. So that is absolutely what you're doing. Your highest potential is you are about to enter the tower and transform, which is going to be your spiritual journey. Wow. And your healing card is the queen of cups. Wow. Um, I really want to say this is going to be an external figure. I mean, it doesn't have to. It's always, you know, hard to say, <laughs> especially in a general reading, but somebody is going to be bringing you the cup of healing. Look at this. She's bringing it to you. And it's I, I noticed this card right away when it came up because I almost never see the queen of cups out of this deck. I don't know why, but I, honestly, I don't know if I've ever pulled it for myself. So man, this could be interdimensional beings 
coming to heal you. I want to even say archangels coming with just messages of love, giving you love, like the healing cup of life, the fountain of youth. Like I feel like this, uh, this cup could have been filled in the fountain of youth. You guys have major healing support. You are so supported. The queen of cups, who, who would you rather wish for, for your healer coming in to support you? And emotions and love. You guys got the strength card. Sitting right on top of the page of wands. So as you guys move forward, as you go into this temple, into this the temple that is this tower to be transformed, you absolutely have the inner strength in order to do, to do this. And you have the strength to ripple that out and you can stabilize your environment. You know, she has tamed the lion just by virtue of her presence. That is why... <laughs> Yes, guys, that is why when you go into the tower, the tower isn't going to crumble. It's going to transform because your presence will almost be like holding your shit together. You can go into the tower and be transformed without having your life be completely flattened because of the, the frequency of inner strength that you hold. You guys, like most people, most like, you know, normal humans have to go through these tower mo moments where their lives are like leveled, right? Because that is the only way that they will evolve. They need to have everything, the rug completely yanked out from underneath them because they need to be forced to hit rock bottom and then they can rise like the Phoenix. And I mean, starseeds, that happens to starseeds too. That certainly happened to me like many times in the past, right? But starseeds moving forward, especially ones resonating on this frequency, our tower moments don't need to be like that anymore. If we can see our tower moments coming and see the signs and see uh, like the dissonance within ourselves, we can go, hey, okay, it is time for me to step up and be the phoenix because I am ready for my tower moment. I am ready for this. I will, I will transform and I will rise. And that is why the, the universe won't need to force you to transform. It, it doesn't. It just needs to signal it to you and you go, okay, I'm on it. I'm on it, universe. You don't need to destroy my life. I will just, I will, I will work through my life and figure out what needs to go. You don't need to take everything from me. I will dispose of the things I don't need. I will resonate with my highest frequencies and move on. You guys will be like designing your own tower moment and experience. Yes, guys, this is so good. This is like, a whole new level of evolution because you're like transcending out of the human paradigm of being controlled by your environment. You guys are in charge here. You guys are in charge here. Okay. Oracle cards. Earth school, life lessons, soul growth, study, higher learning. Yep, you guys are going into the tower in order to, if, like a tower of university, an ivory tower. You are here on earth learning your lessons. And this tower moment for you is going to be a major lesson. Obviously, tower moments are always major lessons. <laughs> so this is a piece of confirmation for me. What else we got? Lifting the veil, questioning everything, anything unaligned must go. I was literally just saying the shit that you don't need, you got to go. And remember, you guys, you don't need the universe to like take that from you. You don't need your tower to crumble because you have the awareness and the intelligence and the alignment to identify what is not aligned with you and you can let it go. And you want to do that because otherwise you'll sink back into like a human level tower moment when the universe will start taking everything from you, you know, but you don't want to be, you don't want to have things taken from you. You want to let them go of your own volition. And you guys are starting to like see through the fog. I mean, shit, you're lifting the veil. You are starting to really understand for yourself. You don't need to, you don't need help seeing through the fog of the veil. You know exactly what has to go. You know what has to go. You don't need anybody to tell you. You don't even need the universe to tell you. <laughs> you can follow 
your own design, your own meta archetype. You got the love, Hadrian energy, codependency, and boundaries. Oh, sorry, that's pronounced Hadarian energy, not Hadrian energy. I was thinking of Hadrian's wall in Scotland, <laughs> but Hadarian, Hadarian. Okay, two things going on here. On the one hand, you have a sign that in past lives on other planets, you were so telepathically interweaved with your soul family. I mean, really almost like with yourself because those soul family people were probably like, like other manifestations of your soul. They were like, you know, in another life, you could have been this higher dimensional piece of soul and you were one thing with like multiple points of consciousness. And here you were living as different humans. So that is really traumatic, right? Because like it literally you are a piece of a larger soul that is now like scattered across the planet. And that is traumatic. So this card is reminding you, you know, that your soul family out is out there. Your soul fragments are out there. The other parts of yourself are out there. And on higher levels, you are still together. You are still interconnected and you are still one. Your over soul is still there holding, holding the reins, holding the strings and holding you all together. The other part is... Because of this, you have a hard, you might be having a hard time like separating yourself from others and erecting like appropriate energetic boundaries. And that is part of what has to go. Uh, if there are toxic people in your life or even just like habits, anything that is not sufficiently segregated from you that should be has to go. That's one of the things that have to go, especially look for toxic people. Even people that don't, maybe they don't even seem toxic. But maybe there's like even just like kind of like a casual friend you have. And there's just something about them that is draining you. You got to You got to have to find a way to separate yourself from them. Oh my God. Okay. And it's not just that. So it's easy if you have acquaintances or kind of like more distant people that are sucking the life out of you and you can just cut the cords and never see them again. And that's fine. But this is really resonating with me, actually. Um, when you have people really close to you, like family, <laughs> people you live in your house with that you like can't live, that you can't avoid, right? And people that you wouldn't want to avoid, like your partner, your spouse, your kids, your parents, right? Your brothers and sisters, your nuclear, nuclear family. It doesn't matter how toxic they are to you. You're probably not going to get rid of them, right? I mean, unless they are really, really toxic. Like if you have people in your family who are like majorly bad, bad news for you, even if they are part of your nuclear family, you got to, I mean, you guys would know if that's something you have to look at. But for the rest of us, if you have a healthy, like a mostly healthy relationship with someone, but they are suffering if they are suffering and that is dragging you down man this resonates with me so hard right now because i'm filming this in march 2020 the whole planet is losing its goddamn mind everybody around me is freaking out i actually saw some people yesterday like come out of their apartment building like below me and they were like screaming at each other in the parking lot and freaking out and it's just everybody is losing it um, you know, I'm sitting here like holding this energy of, you know, not freaking out. I am not sitting in fear. I'm not sitting in anxiety. And that is one of the things I can do. That's what I've worked so hard to get to. I can sit in equanimity while everybody else panics. And that is energetically and just practically helpful for people to have those of us. And I think a lot of star seeds are doing this a lot, a lot of star seeds and other people too. But you know, we're talking about star seeds here. A lot of star seeds are sitting in equanimity or at least just a much more saner level of concern about the world. We don't need to freak out like everybody because we have a much more zoomed out perspective and a lot, most of us have done the inner work to hold our frequency where we want it. Meanwhile, everyone else is panicking. <laughs> and if you're watching this later and you know March 2020 doesn't mean anything to you, then Great, but there's still probably somebody around you that you're really close with, really, really love, really energetically enmeshed with, and they're going through a hard time and you feel like their, their worry and anxiety and fear and panic is dragging you down. And it's like, you're like, oh, I almost like, how do I 
live with that? <laughs> how, how can you be there for the people you love? How can you hold your neutrality? How can you observe their anxiety with neutrality and still, you know, be energetically and physically and emotionally and spiritually enmeshed with them? Very difficult question, guys. And I don't really know if I have the answer for you because this is a problem I'm working on right now. Um, you know, my, my, my actual human family, some of them are like in major, major anxiety right now. And I just want them to knock it off because it's, it's hard for me to hold my equanimity. If I'm like, it's like, I'm feeling, I'm like literally empathically feeling their anxiety and I know their anxiety is pointless. I just want them to stop it. Right. But of course, you know, they're going through their timelines. They're doing exactly what they're supposed to be doing. They're learning their lessons. So we can't be judging them for that. They're doing what they're supposed to be doing exactly when they're supposed to be doing it. Even if that's hitting rock bottom, just like we hit rock, rock bottom in the past, right? We have to respect that. We've all been through it. We're just doing it in different moments. And that doesn't, that's not really that significant, right? When, when we, when we do these cycles, so we can't be judging them for being anxious, even though we want to, <laughs> even though sometimes like we just want them to knock it off. Right. Um, so I think the point here is that this is a lesson for us. This is one of our challenges. This is our learning opportunity. How it's like, this is like stepping up our ability to sit in equanimity. How can we do that when the person you love the most is like losing their mind? They're going through like a major panic crisis. How can you maintain your equanimity when they are, when you are empathically picking up on their fear? That if you can somehow manage that, and again, I am trying to figure this out. So I don't have the, I don't have the answer for you, but if you can figure that out, That'll be such a huge, massive leveling up for you because you will be taking your ability to sit in the zero point field, to sit in neutrality, to neutrally observe your environment. That'll be a whole new level. It'll, it'll be like passing the bar exam of like non-duality. <laughs> so yeah. Okay. Good luck guys. If you figure it out, please let me know because I, you know. I could use the advice on that one. And here we go. Forge don't follow. Pave a new path. Be the leader you wish you had. Yes, guys. You're looking around you going, why am I the only one not losing their mind? Why am I the only one able to sit here and navigate this with some level of sanity? Well, <sighs> past me used to sit around going, why me? Why do I always have to be the one to keep their head? Why do I have to be logical? You know, why do I have to be the one who's not freaking out? Why do I have to calm everybody down? And I got, I got really fixated on that. Why me? Why me? My, why me? Why not somebody else? Right? Why couldn't somebody come in and save me? Why couldn't somebody come else come in and be the leader? Well, <laughs> it's us because it's us. It's us because we are the ones who can do it. We don't need to be butthurt about it. We are literally the ones to be the leaders. It's time for us to step up. We are the leaders, guys. Not, you know, not like we need to get all uh, arrogant about this, right? We're not like always the leader. We're not the leader in all situations. We're not like better than everybody else because we can lead in this one aspect. But in this aspect, at this moment in space time, at this nexus here, there is an opportunity for us to be the leader that we don't see. That's, that's why we're here. That's why we're here. There is this, there is an area in which we can lead. Other people are leading in other places and other times in other ways. And everybody takes turn being a leader. You know that if you're in a really, uh, if you're in like a soulmate twin flame relationship, right? You guys, in some circumstances, one person has strengths and they capitalize on that and they lead the way. In other situations, you have the strengths and you lead the way, right? Right now, it's your turn to lead the way, guys. So don't sit, don't sit around waiting for a leader. Don't sit around waiting for somebody to come in and straighten the shit out for you because it's all it's all you and you got this. Absolutely, you got this. You your your one your one problem really is uh trying to observe the pain of the people you love without letting it completely derail your frequency. All right, guys, I think that's what I'm seeing here. 
I hope this was helpful to somebody. Happy tower moment, guys. This is going to be a big one. <laughs> I love you guys. I'll see you in the ether.